5-1, rate of change and slope. So objective for this section is to find rates of change from tables and to find the slope. So our essential understanding is that we can use ratios to show a relationship between changing quantities, such as vertical and horizontal change, which is what slope is. Okay, so our definition here for rate of change is that it shows the relationship between two changing quantities. When one quantity depends on the other, the following is true, that the rate of change is equal to the change in the dependent variable over the change in the independent variable. Okay. So in order to use the rate of change, we need to kind of know which variable is which. So which one is dependent, which one is independent, which one is the x value, which one is the y value. So for our first problem, the table shows the distance band marches over time. Is the rate of change in distance with respect to time constant? So let's find let's find out. First, rate of change. So we need rate of change is going to be equal to well we need to decide which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable so the dependent is the distance the output of my whatever function this is is the distance so it's going to be distance over time right the independent over the dependent and again, you know that time is the uh, independent variable because distance depends on how how much time has passed, right? You walk more, the longer there is, usually. Okay. So let's figure out, let's calculate the rate of change from each row of the table. Okay, so the first rate of change is going to be, well, we need to figure out First, we, we, need, we, we need changes, right? Change in distance over change in time. So we need this change in distance, this change in time right there. So here the change is 1, and here the change in distance is 260. Okay? So the change in distance would be 260 over 1, which is 260. Okay, that's good. Next. The distance there, 780 minus 520 is again 260, and the distance there is 1. So again, we have 260 over 1, which is 260, and same thing right there. So the rate of change is constant, and it is equal to, well, let's actually label this feet in one minute. So that's 260 feet per minute. And that's a constant rate of change that the distance, the band, the band will, what this, this means, the band will march 260 feet in one minute. And that's what it represents. Okay. Let's look at our GATA problem. Do you get the same rate of change if you use non-consecutive rows of the table? Well, kind of, because if we look at two non-consecutive rows of the table, we're just going to be subtracting bigger numbers. Okay, the rate of change though is going to be constant. So let's look at the first row, oops, and the last row. Okay, so if we take the change in distance, so that's going to be 1040 over, or sorry, 1040 minus 260 over 4 minus 1. So that's going to be minus 260 gives me 780 over 3. And when you divide 780 divided by 3, you get 260. Okay. So no matter which two rows of the table we use to calculate our rate of change, it is always the same. It is constant. So. We use rate of change more more commonly with a concept called slope. Okay, so the graphs of ordered pairs, time and distance, like in problem one, lie on a line, right? So we have our distance feet of the band is going, and we have our time in minutes. The relationship between time and distance is linear, 
And when data is linear, the rate of change is constant. Notice that the rate of change found in problem one is just the ratio of the vertical change or rise to the horizontal change or run between the two points of the line, right? We're going up 260, right one. So this rate of change is called the slope, okay? So slope is equal to vertical change or over horizontal change or more commonly remembered rise over run. The amount you go up and down divided by the amount you go left and right. So what is the slope of each line? So if we calculate the slope of each line in these pictures right here, remember that slope is going to be the rise over the run. Okay, And I can start with any point I want. Usually, however, it makes more sense to go left to right. So let's start at this point right here. And we're going to go up 2, 1, 2, right 3. So that's up to right three. So the slope is two thirds. Okay. For problem B, now the rise is negative four over positive five. Okay. And I do always like to go left to right. You don't have to though, right? So if I started at this point to get to this point, I would have to go left five, so the slope would be left five and up four. And basically, both of those are going to give you the same slope, a negative four over five. Primarily, though, if you can, try to go from left to right when we're looking at pictures when we're trying to figure out slopes. Okay, What's the slope of each line here? So we're going to start there. And I don't have to go to that point right there. It's marked off. It's a nice point. I could try to calculate the slope there, but I really don't know where that dot is. Same thing with any of these until I get to this one, which is a nice point because it's on the coordinate plane. Or it's on the plane here. So we're going to go up one, two. So my slope is going to be up two. And then one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to be two over five. Here, my slope is going to be down two. So that's going to be negative two over one, two, three, four, five, six. And always, if you can, reduce. So this would be negative one third. Okay. And your negative sign, usually we put it in the front instead of leaving it at the top. And leaving it at the bottom is never a good idea. Uh, pick two new points on. Uh, pick new points in the line. So problem A. So this one. See, I can do that because this one has. Oh, look at this one. That's a nice point right there. Okay. So let's go all the way from this point to this point, and you can see I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's up six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And nine, which reduces to two thirds. Okay. So you do get the same slope no matter where you are in the line. So any any points on the line will give you the same slope. Slopes of lines are constant. Okay. Notice that in part A, right here. My, my slope is positive, and my line from left to right goes up. And in part B, my slope was negative, and my line from left to right goes down. Okay. So that's an important thing to remember in a way that you can check that you are getting the slope correct. So we can use any two points on a line to find the slope. We use subscripts to distinguish between the two points. In the diagram, x1, y1 are the coordinates of this point right there, point A. And x2, y2 are the coordinates of point B. These are subscripts 
They're not a mathematical operation, unlike this. That's an exponent, right? That means x squared. If we put that 2 down here, it's a subscript, and it just means it's a way to differentiate one term from another term. So to find the slope of the line AB, we can use our slope formula. So if you don't have a picture, if you just have two points, you don't have to draw the picture and count like we were doing in the last page. You can use this formula that the slope is equal to rise over one run y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x2 minus x1 is not zero or else we'd have zero in the denominator. The x coordinate you use first in the denominator must belong to the same ordered pair as the y coordinate you use first. So usually, right, we would call this the first point and this the second point. It doesn't matter, though. All that matters is that they're different points. You're not going to get a slope if you pick two, two, if you pick the same point. OK, so what I like to do here is say that this is x1. That's y1. This is x2. And that's y2. But it can be the other way around. And I'll show you, I'll show you how that works in a second. Okay, so if we follow the formula, we have the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So that is going to be negative 2 minus 0 over 3 minus negative 1. Negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. Negative 3 minus 1 is a positive 4. And that equals negative 1 half. Okay. What happens, however, if, whoops, if we take these points, all right, and we do it the other way. So we call this x2 and this y2, this x1, this y1. Okay. I'll show you that it does not matter. Okay. So now my equation looks like this, 0 minus negative 2 over negative 1 minus 3. 0 minus negative 2, that turns into a positive 2 over negative 4, which is still negative 1 half. Okay. So it doesn't matter which coordinate you call x2 or x1, y1, x2, x2, y2, as long as you don't do this. Don't start with, let's start with negative 2. Don't go negative 2 minus 0 over, and then start with that one, negative 1 minus 3. Now you would get a positive 1 half. So you would definitely get an incorrect slope if you used that technique. Okay, so don't do that. Okay, slope of the line through 1, 3, 4, comma, 1, negative 1. So let's go y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which gives me negative 4 over a positive 3, which is negative 4 over 3. Okay. Plot the points. Does the slope of the line look like expected to? Well, I don't I don't want to draw the whole graph, but if you if you do plot these two points, Right, and get, you know, wait, one's negative. Let's make a four quadrant graph. Boom, boom. So if we go right one, up three, right four, down one, look, we have a graph that's going down, and it's going down four, right three. And if my graph was better, we could count it up and, uh, and actually get a torque in. There are a couple special situations with horizontal and vertical lines. So if we look at these two lines, we would say that the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this is going to be 0 over 5, which 0 divided by anything is 0. So the slope of a horizontal line is zero. However, with this one right here, whoops, slope is equal to y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1, which gives me negative 3 over 0, which is not 0, it is undefined. Okay, you cannot have 0 in the denominator. Okay, so slopes of vertical lines are undefined. Horizontal lines 0, vertical lines undefined. So what is the slope of these two? So we have, I always just like to start with the second one right there. Makes, makes sense. 2 minus negative 3 over 4 minus 4. That's going to be 5 over 0, which is undefined. And this one, negative 3 minus negative 3 over 5 minus negative 1, which is 0 over 6, which is 0. This would be a vertical line. This one would be a horizontal. OK, so let's summarize what we've learned about slopes. Positive slope, the line goes, as we read all these charts, as we read all these graphs, we're going to read them left to right. OK, so this graph goes up from left to right. It is a positive slope. Down from left to right, it's a negative slope. Horizontal line, slope 0. Vertical line is undefined slope. Okay. Is this rate of change constant? So if we look at this, we're going up by 3, 7. Okay, well, that's up by more than 3. Uh, but that's okay. And then we're going up by 75 cents, up by 75 cents. Okay, so we can say that it is constant. If I want to know for sure, then I have to find the cost of each pencil, which is going to be 25 cents. Okay, because if I go, if I give it three more pencils and it costs an extra, it costs an extra 75 cents, 0.75 divided by three is um, 25 cents. So if I want to know for sure if it is a constant rate of change, I can check these two points and go 12 minus 7 over 3 minus 1.75, which would give me 25 cents. Okay, so this is a constant slope. Okay, so what's the slope of this line? Well, I can see because it goes from left to right, it goes down. I know it's going to be negative. Down 1, right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right, five. So it's negative one fifth. Okay, slope of the line through uh, negative one two comma two comma three, and it is going to be negative five over three. Right, two minus negative three, one minus two. Uh, what characteristic of a graph represents the rate of change? And basically, that's the slope. So when you look at a graph, how and slope is also a measure of steepness. So how steep the graph is, the steeper it is, the higher the slope is going to be. Give an example of a real-world situation where you can model with a horizontal line. Um, how about a ski slope? Okay, slope, ski slope. Okay, so usually, well, usually they're not horizontal. Usually they change. Oh, never mind. Horizontal line. Okay, so walking down the street. Uh, not if you live in North Bergen, but walking down the street, right? Uh, some streets usually are flat. So you can model that with a horizontal line and the rate of change for that situation is zero, right? You're not going up or down. Uh, compare and contrast how does finding a line slope by counting the units of vertical and horizontal change in the graph compare with finding it using the slope formula. Uh, both methods give you the same result. Uh, the If you have a graph in front of you, if you see the picture, Sometimes it's easier to just count using the picture. If you have the coordinates, usually it's easier to use the formula. So whichever one is easier. A student calculated the slope of a line at the right to be 2. Uh, what is the correct slope? Well, two would, be, 2 would be the slope if it was much steeper. But this right rise over run, the slope there is 1 half, up 1, right 2 not 2 over 1, 1 over 2. Okay. And that's 5-1 rate of change and slope.